guys, it's Nick here at Elite Diesel. Welcome back. Um, so today I got in front of me in the 1970s Volkswagen Beetle. It has a complete Baja suspension. Uh, it's a very cool build. It's not mine, it's actually a buddy of mine. Um, but I can say it's very it's very fun to drive. Uh, if y'all like stuff like this, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, maybe I'll make a video on this one day. Today is, uh, we're going to be working on something a little bit different. Uh, we're actually not going to be working on any kind of vehicle today. Um, what we're going to be working on is actually to my left behind the camera. Um, so I just wanted to show you all this. So if y'all actually like something, I want to see a video on this thing, please uh, let me know. And uh, maybe I'll get to make a video of that. Uh, so I'm going to get y'all set up over here and um, get, uh, get my tools and everything and show y'all what we're going to be working on today. All right, guys, as you can see, this bad boy is no vehicle. And this right here is what we're going to be working on today. It is a 2005 Champion Advantage air compressor. It does have this nice automatic drain valve that drains when the air compressor uh, turns off, it drains the moisture out of the tank. This is supposed to. Now, I have no idea if it still works, along with this pressure sensor or this motor or starter or maybe the... Uh, the pump itself, the uh, compressor itself may not work. I have no idea, but we're going to find out. Now, I picked this bad boy up to run it in our shop. Now, it's been sitting back here for a while because this is a three-phase setup. Our shop is not three-phase, it is single-phase. Now, let's just hold the brakes here before anyone says anything in the comments saying, oh, we had the technology today to run three-phase motors on single-phase, or single-phase on three-phase, using a VFD or a DPS, or whatever it is. Um, I'm not interested in doing all that. I'm going to do something very simple, which is just replace this three-phase motor with a single-phase motor using the same 215T frame motor, you know, all the same specs, just in single-phase. Um, we are going to be replacing the starter setup, too. Um, we're going to get rid of that. Uh, but today, we are going to take this motor off, so, and this starter. We're going to take that off. Um, so, First things first, obviously we need to get the fan shroud off, or the pulley shroud, or whatever you want to call it. We're going to get this off. Um, that way we can get the pulley off. See if we can even get the pulley off. It may not come off. Um, we're going to have to cut it off. I don't know. But we need to get this motor off. That way I can get a new motor put on this thing. Um, we are not going to get the main motor put on today. Um, there will be a different video. So in this video, we're just going to show you all take, me taking this motor off and going from there. So let me get my tools and I'll be right back. Alright, so it looks like it's held in by a bunch of just sheet metal screws. Um, so we're going to get all those screws taken off. It looks like it's got, uh, maybe, yeah, four, it's got four, um, looks like 14 millimeter bolts also holding the shroud. So we're going to get those off. Actually, a 13 or a 12. I don't know what I said. I said 14. I don't know. Either way, we're getting them off. Uh oh, there we go. I need a spoon for that one. I'm prepared. are out the way. Now we can take our 8 millimeter and get all these sheet metal screws. Alright, that should be all should be all of them. Take the uh, wiring out. 
So to do that, it looks like I'm gonna have to go get in a wrench. So I'll be right back with that wrench. Okay, so I want to uh, get these bolts here broke loose. the windings and uh, see if this butter's any good. switch unhooked from in here and then we'll get a box unhooked and get it taken off. Alright, so I got a socket in the and get the box off here. Alright, 
much so if I say anything wrong um, make sure you comment below correct me uh, I'm, like I said I'm not prof professional like this so if y'all see me make a mistake let me know all right so I'm gonna get this motor inside next to the other one um, we'll see if we can get the pulley off I know y'all can't see me we'll see if we'll get the uh, See if we can get this pulley off and then we'll test both motors with the multimeter. Like I said, I don't have an insulation tester, so we're gonna be able to test the insulation. But the motors both they spin freely and if the uh, windings are all good, it should be a good motor um, on both. Like the guy, the guy said it, uh, it ran perfect. The only reason he's getting rid of it is because he got a new one. Um, the only thing wrong with it was something fell on the cage and dented it up a little bit. That was the only thing wrong with it. He said it worked perfect. And the guy had it, so I just can't use it with a three-phase motor, so we're going to be putting a single-phase motor on it. Now, this thing does have a after-cooler on it, or whatever this is, is some kind of cooler. Um, I assume for the air. I don't know here. Let's see. I mean, it's, yeah, so it should be for the air. Some kind of cooler for the air. Um, now, this pulley acts as a fan. It's got fins, fan fins on it. So it looks like it spins this way. So whenever we put the new motor on, we got to make sure the new motor is spinning in the right direction. Um, so this obviously cools and doesn't mess any of that up, you know, the compressor itself. So make sure, we gotta make sure it spins in the same direction as the old motor. Let me go ahead and hook it up. Also, this is the low oil switch. Um, so you got a little sight glass here for the oil. Can't see in it, but we'll probably, probably needs to be cleaned out. Um, but anywho, so if the oil, oil gets too low, it'll actually shut the compressor off to hopefully save your uh, compressor so that's cool also got the little pressure switch so that hooks into the, the, the starter box tool so both of these if they notice anything wrong it'll shut the whole compressor off so all right guys so these are the two motors that came with the air compressor this one right here is the one off the air compressor and this was a spare that came with it um now this one is a dual voltage motor so it is a nine lead and this is a single volt motor so it's only got three leads one two and three so we're gonna show i'm gonna show you how to test this one i'm gonna show you how to test this one i'm gonna check to see if they're uh any good if they are maybe we can sell them uh and get some money towards the new motor and starter and whatnot so i'm gonna start off with i'll probably start with this one and then i'll show you how to do this well, actually no i'll go ahead and show you how to do this one right after we see about getting this pulley off so i don't think we're gonna be able to get this pulley off i got an allen key on here see if we can break this Okay, so that turns. That's cool. Um, I don't have any WD-40, so this should be interesting. Let me see if I can set y'all up here. All right, so let's see if we can get this thing off. Ooh, that's tight. Just walk it back and forth. Patience. 
always helps. Never want to force it. Just take your time. Wiggle it back and forth until it comes loose. Until you can get it all the way walked out. Oh, there's actually a little access port right here. That's cool. I don't think my wrench will fit all the way. Barely. Just barely. Awesome. Alright, we got that out. I don't think there's any more. That's it. Let's see if we can slightly tap it. I don't think it's going to move. I don't want to hit it too hard because I don't want to mess the bearings up in the motor. I'm just lightly tapping it here. Well, put pressure right here so you're not. Yeah, so this isn't going to budge. Um, I'll try and get some W40 or something to spray in there, let it sit for a while. Might have to get a pull it or pull it off, but anywho. We're not going to worry about the pulley. I'm, I'm going to show you all how to do this. So this motor is a nine lead dual voltage. So you got three groups of two and a one group of three. So um, it is connected through star. So I'm going to show you all here. You got. Let's see here. All right. So you got three leads. Seven, eight, and nine. You got your center coil, and then you got your outer coils, which is one and four, five, and two, and then you got six and three. So, what we're going to test here. If I can get my shark put back on. What we're going to test is make sure we have um, continuity between 1 and 4, 6, 3, 5, 2, 8, and 7, 8, and 9, and 7, and 9. And then we're going to test resistance values between 1 and 4, 6, 3, 5, 2, 1, 7, I'm sorry, 7, 8, 8, 9, and 9, and 7. I don't know. Neighbors are weird. All right. Anywho, after that, we're going to put lead on number eight, and then we're going to test the five and two uh, coil, six and three coil, one and four coil. Make sure they're all open, and then we're going to test. We're going to hook the lead to the three and six coil. And we're going to test five and two and one and four. Also, we don't. We want to make sure that. All right. So now that we've got. So this is going to be for a three phase, nine lead motor. Star. So what we got is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what we're going to do now is make sure we got equal connection between one and four. Five and two, six and three, seven and... Oh, all right, sorry guys. I'm having a problem with the wind blowing my paper around. All right, so what we got now is leads one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now there's a gap between all these. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, test the... Um, make sure we have an equal connection between one and four, five and two, six and three, seven and eight, eight and nine, and nine and seven. We're also going to see if we have a, well, no shorts between each coil. Also, we're going to uh, test, make sure we have equal resistance on all coils. So, one and four coil, five and two coil, six and three coil, seven and eight, eight and nine, nine and seven. And when we get done with that, we're going to make sure each coil isn't grounded out to ground. So, we'll take this over here. So I've already got it them split off into the 
one set of three and then the three sets of two. What we're going to do is we're going to test to make sure we have connection between, let's see here, what is this? This is one and four, and that is 0.2 ohms, five and two. Point two ohms and then six and three here. Point two ohms. Now we're going to test seven, eight, and nine. So seven to eight. Point five. Eight seven to nine. Point six. And then eight to nine. Point six. Let me test seven to eight again. Point six. Okay. Yeah, everything's point six on those. All right. So now we know that each one of these uh, coils has equal connection. So now what we're going to do is we want to make sure. All right. So now I'm going to hook lead. I went ahead and wrote the ohm resistance down. Um, now we're going to hook our uh, one lead to the eight, and then we're going to test, make sure we have open circuits on one and four, five and two, and three and six. And all those are open. Now we're going to put a lead on the 3 and 6 and test the 1 and 4 and the 5 and 2. And those are open. So now we're going to test, I'm going to put one lead on ground, make sure I have a good ground. Good ground connection, and then we're gonna make sure that none of these wires are, are shorted out the ground. And we are good. So now that we have tested all that, we can spin the motor over, over and see that the motor is not seized. So now we know this motor is more than likely okay. It's uh, it's it's good. So now we're gonna move on to the other motor over here. So this one is a single voltage. All right. So we only have three leads to test, which is this one's gonna be a lot easier. So we got one, two, and three. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook one lead to one, and then we're going to hook a lead to two. We got 0.2 ohms, one to three, 0.2 ohms, and then two to three, 0.2 ohms. All right, so now, we're gonna hook this one to ground. Make sure we get a good ground connection. And then we're gonna make sure neither one of these wires or leads is grounded. And it's not. So now that that's done, we can turn the motor over, make sure it's not seized, and it's not. So now we know this motor is more than likely good. And we got two perfectly healthy motors hopefully so all right guys so that's going to be it for today's video so we pulled down our air compressor um we got the three phase unit off um we tested both motors um we took our starter uh control box off um now it's going to be to clean everything up get the uh, single phase motor and get it installed and everything and uh make sure everything's in tip-top shape like the oil and whatnot uh and see, hook it up and see if this thing works.
Um, if you like today's video, make sure to like, comment, and um, subscribe uh, so you can see more videos like this one. Uh, now, this is uh, obviously not what we're used to on the channel. We're used to working on vehicles and whatnot, but this is going to help us work on our vehicles. So, yeah. Hope to see y'all in the next one.